This is 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 24. Then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of the Most High, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Kal halal Hashem, Hashem, double honors, the apostles and elders of great millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down teaching preaching, pushing this gospel, good news to the four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I call this lesson, oppressors have always renamed their subjects. Just some commentary from me with a few scriptures put in there. It's just an observation. We know the, the scriptures well. But we're bringing it out anyway. We're going to keep repeating them over and over and over. Because this is a pattern that this so-called white man, we're prophesying against Mount Seir. It's a commandment. Who's Mount Seir? We're not prophesying against a mountain. Seir means a, a hairy. And Edom means red. Who is this red and hairy man? He's the same man calling himself the white man. I want you to call me white since 1681. There's no such nationality in the bible he's esau edom the edomites that's who he is and speaking of renaming i always remember this scene from this uh series that was on the uh, roots you probably remember it where this uh, slave insisted on calling his original name the uh, kunta kinte but his slave master was determined to whip and beat that name out of him. And he successfully bashed him and beat him and bruised him till he was, his back was all blooded up with how much lashes that he received to change the name. What is this about this man wanting to change a name? Why can't you just have your own name? No, it's a part of destroying who you are. Let's get... Uh, well, let's start in Deuteronomy and then we'll move on to, to Daniel because this is a repeated thing. Let's get Deuteronomy 37, part of the curses here. Uh, 37, and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. That's who we are, the true children of Israel. Our power, whose name is Yahweh, his only begotten son, is Yahweh Shai. He has a people in the earth and We've been beaten so much and bashed and our heads all done in, you know, really effed up our minds. We just can't understand that who we are. It's been beaten out of us that we can't accept the truth when it's presented. We've become a byword and the majority have accepted these bywords. They can't break free. They just can't do it. They're actually protecting. This has got something called Stockholm Syndrome, where you develop empathy, sympathy for your captor after you've been bashed, you've beaten, raped uh, several times over and over and over, that you start to enjoy it. Your brain, I uh, understand, your, the, the makeup of your whole design of your mind starts to change to accept this treatment. And so that's the situation where the majority of Hebrew Israelites find themselves unless our power has picked them out from the foundation of the earth to wake up and to reject the madness that this man has tried to instill. Let's get back to it here. Uh, Deuteronomy, let's get 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Even though the physical yoke has been removed from our necks, there's still some people, they've got an even heavier yoke because it's in their mind and they cannot remove that yoke from out of their mind to accept the truth. When it's presented, they want to fight. Their mouths are flapping. They're upset. They're agitated, irritated. They want to start a quarrel and even get into a physical altercation with the person bringing the truth. So mad are they, incensed when they hear it. Verse 49, And the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth. Who's got this as their emblem? Through various captivities, this man... 
the Edomite has used this eagle, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Toby didn't know what this man was speaking about. Okay, so that's just a movie depiction. And you know, this man fabricates everything, but it's the fact he's still doing it. Wanting you to call, he's actually wanting to change up the name of your power. We're going to speak about that a little while from now. So this man is identified in the scriptures. If you can't see it, you're not supposed to. Go back to church. A nation of first countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. He doesn't care about how old or how young you are. Let's get verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. If you read from verse 1 to 15 of this Deuteronomy uh, 28, you see all the blessings if you behave yourself. Speaking with Moses speaking to Hebrew Israelites. But from 16 right to the end at 68, it's got all these curses. Nobody else fits them apart from the Hebrew Israelites who they've given all these bywords. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there shalt thou serve other gods, which is exactly what we are doing, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and a failing of eyes and a sorrow of mind. Let's just read 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Egypt in the Hebrew Mithraim to be bound up is synonymous with our bondage, slavery, by the way, Whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. This is slavery, and no man shall buy you. That's to say, no man shall redeem you apart from our power, who sent his son to do exactly that. Let's get a little bit more here on this name changes, all this nothing new under the sun. Daniel we want. Daniel 1, let's go from 6. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. See, if you say those names to the majority of people, they have no clue what you're talking about. But they know the slave names, you see? They know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's what we know. We can't remember. Sometimes I try to remember these names and they slip from me. But I always remember the slave names that was given See, they gave Daniel the name of Belteshazzar and gave the others Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these are the slave names and this is a habit of those who are the, the oppressors, those who are in rulership, to rename their subjects. Sub means under, jet meaning to rule. So those who they are ruling over. Let's get some more. This is a a part of destroying a memory, your identity. Actually, let's go straight to uh, Psalms 83. Psalms 83, verse 3 to 7. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. That's the Hebrew Israelites. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the, the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. See? This is the aim of these people. They are shocked and dismayed that if we have woken up, but we didn't do it to ourselves, the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, who woken us up, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Who's at the top of the list? Verse 6, the tabernacles of Edom. That's Esau, this, this white man, and Ishmaelites, the Arabs, Moabs, that's the Chinese and Koreans, Hagarines, more uh, Arabs, I think, Gabal, Amon is the Japanese, Amalek is the chief house of Esau, Edom. They currently have all of the earth, earth's riches in their hand. Some of their policies, where's that uh, removing the Hebrew Israelites? For far from their, their families, and you see them doing it right up to this day. The tribes come onto their border in uh, Babylon the Great, which is America, and what do they do? 
they ship them, they take them, put them in airplanes and take them, spread them, for, uh, split up the families. It's a wicked practice. Are you going to tell me there's no payback for all of this? What about some of their uh, social policies? Made up crimes. So even after the end of the physical slavery, they can get you back into their private prisons where they earn money from you. Let's get uh, the Maccabees. Maccabees in the Apocrypha. All these books they try to discredit because the receipts are in here. Maccabees uh, 1. Let's get uh, 56 and 57. And when they... Oh, this is the Greek captivity. Who are the Greeks? Well, we'll go back and read that in a moment. 56. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law which they found, they burnt them with fire. And wheresoever was found with any of the book of the testament, this is the Bible we're speaking about, or if any consented to the law, the king's commandment was that they should put him to death. Let's go back here. Who's this we? Who you're speaking about? First Maccabees. Let's go from, well, right at the top. And it happened after Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Shetim, had smitten Darius of the Persians and Medes that he reigned in his stead, the first ever over Greece. This is an Edomite empire starting here. That's why they don't want it in the Bible to start speaking all this shit about, oh, it's not canonized, but you don't want to include that because it identifies them and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations insomuch that the earth was quiet before him whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. So Alexander the Great, they boast about this man saying at the start of his reign, that is when civilization started. So there was nothing before him. So they claim him, but they don't want to claim all the wickedness that goes along with his reign and his rulership. Nothing new under the sun. This is the Greeks. As a matter of fact, the first of these uh, uh, slave ships, I think it was the first one that had this uh, diabolical name they made up, of Jebus. Under this man, we are on a uh, slave, uh, mass murder, untold wickedness took place under this wicked name that they made up and forced everyone to say it or else. People don't understand this renaissance, rebirth. Rebirth of who? Is this man coming back into rulership after a brief thousand year hiatus? I think that's Revelation 20. I won't go to that. So iconoclasm, the defacing of all of the images because Hebrew Israelites under various names, Moors and what have you, I think it's Hasmonean, whatever other dynasty, for around a thousand years from about 300 AD to 13th, 14th century when this man was put to one side. So when he came back, and his deadly wound was healed. He's, we've got a repeat here of what he was doing before. Um, let's get uh, Maccabees. It's a repeat here. Maccabees 3 and 40, 48. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. See? This is the Greek Empire. This all happened before. Is just repeating his same old playbook. Under this Jebus, you can break every single law. That's in the Bible. You can worship any any god you like. There's no dietary law. Just eat what you like. Just do what whatever. You got this YOLO thing. You only live once. Just do whatever you want to do. You can love whoever, whatever, whenever. No laws. This man is truly. A man of sin, lawless. Where are we going to go next? Isaiah. Let's get uh, gross darkness. Isaiah 61, is it? No, 60. Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people it's because this man is in rulership so the people are mourning see job 9 24 tells us that the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked you don't know who he is he's right in front of your face while you're talking about some other antichrist and all this this man is doing all of the works 
He's doing it in front of your face and you're calling on this slave name that he's given you. You can't break free from the name. Gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. This is the seed of Jacob. That's who we are. We trace our lineage, go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's get Isaiah 25. Let's go from seven. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the cover and cast over all people. It's happening now, piece by piece. This man is being uncovered. And the veil that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God, Yahweh, power will wipe away tears from off all faces and rebuke the rebuke of his people. The Most High has a people. This is not a everybody thing. That's Roman Catholicism bullshit. And if you hold on to it, the fire is coming for you. The rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it, and it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our power. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. It's coming back. Coming back for his people. I mean, one click on a mouse or a touch on your phone can get you to this information. There's no J until 1524. How hard is it to just check? Is this true? This is in these people's history books. An extension of the eye. There's no J sound. That name you're calling could not ever be his name. And what about trying to find his true name? Isn't it time? To, can't you spend a moment to look to see what is the true name of the Son of the Most High? It means you're truly lost if you can't do that. It's you. It's, Incredible to see. 2023, information all over the place. And you just can't spare that moment to have a look. What is the name of our Savior? How can it be a name beginning with J? It's totally impossible if that name didn't exist until 1524. That's 1,500 years after the man himself that they're referring to was walking the earth. The J was not widely used in print until 1634. So even the King James Version Bible that was completed in 1611 did not have any J's in there. You should be interested to wonder what is the, his name, Baruch 2, starting at 30, for I knew that they would not hear me because it's a stiff-necked people, but in the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves that's what we're doing now. It's been happening for the last few decades. And shall know that I am the Lord their God, for I will give them a heart, that's a mind, and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. Where's that? It's in the Americas, primarily North America, where this truth has come alive. And think upon my name and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers which sinned before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, <clears throat> and shall be lords of it. And I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their power. And they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people Israel out of the land that I have given them. Yahweh is sending his son Yahweh Shai back to destroy and to remove this man calling himself the white man is Esau Adam. He's in power. He's the one who's performing all the works of Satan. We see that in uh, Thessalonians and various other play, um, Ezekiel and so on. All him and all his gods, this Jebus character. And he's going to rule in righteousness with his people. He has a people. His people is not everyone. That's madness. How can my favorite be everyone? How can an election mean everyone? 
You just call on this new character. Everyone, everyone just calling and you can all be saying it's a, it's a form of madness. An election cannot be everyone. Let's get uh, Matthew just to finish up here. One twenty-one, and she shall bring forth, speaking of Mary, a son, and shall call his name Yahawashai, means he's a savior, redeemer, deliverer. He's our high priest, mediator, intercessor, the captain of our salvation. She shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yahawashai, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's possessive pronouns. His people, their sins. Let's get back to school here. Basic. Luke repeats the same sentiments. Let's just get uh, 1 verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed. That's to purchase his people. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us. In the house of his servant, David. We could jump to 77. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people. By remission of their sins. I mean it's very basic. But we're going over it anyway. There's a repeated pattern of these people. To beat your name out of you. To beat your power out of you. And this man has taken it a step further. To put himself up. It's the, an act of blasphemy. As your power. He's the son. He's the angel. He's the prophets. He's a whole tabernacle that is in heaven. He's put himself. Say, oh, that's me. You've got to worship me. So don't stretch a lesson beyond where it needs to be. You've been listening to this commentary here. Oppressors have always renamed their subjects. Shalom to the next lesson. We don't fear no God.